That's what I'm here for, man. What's happening, YouTube? It's the Lamont and Larry show. Lamont with the living legend himself, Larry. What's good what's with you tonight? <laughs> so for everybody that wants to know what we're going to cover in the show, because we've got a couple of good things to cover. Number one, we have got to talk about the liberties that LeBron James took in producing Madam C.J. Walker's story called Self Made. Next, we've also got to talk about Idris Elba versus Cardi B and the coronavirus. We got to update y'all on what's going on with that in the coronavirus. The Rona. And, yep, yeah, Corona. Angela Bassett is going to have a biopic, and y'all will never guess what two actresses she wants to play her. One of them is from Power. I'll save that for you. And last but not least, Who is it, Larry, Lala? <laughs> hell no. There ain't no Lala. <laughs> she was, she was, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's what's Bo Boris Kojo's uh, wife's name? Wants her to play her? The Williams chick. No, no. What's her name? Uh, Art. What's her name? Something. Nicole. Something. I Ari think. Parker. Nicole. Yeah. Ari Parker. No, 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 no. Because Angela Bassett says she will never get plastic surgery. She just the way she is. She, okay. By the way, she's one of my favorite actresses. And last thing we're going to cover, ladies and gentlemen, is they did pass the bill, a two trillion dollar bill to economically stimulate. So-called stimulate. It's, ladies and gentlemen, it is nothing but a Band-Aid on a cannon wound. That's all it is. Yeah. And Larry, before we get into C.J. Walker, I got to shout out my homeboy, James. He was the best man at my wedding. Me and him, we, we are two nerds. And his wife hooked us up way back when I was a single young respiratory therapist. We go to WWE together back in the day. We go to all these nerd events. We've been to E3. And a nice. good friend, ladies and gentlemen, a good friend is there for you through thick and thin. A good friend will not forsake you and leave you if you miss his birthday. A good friend, can the choir say amen? Amen. A good friend will always show you support. And because he was so concerned about coronavirus and us being on restriction by my birthday, which is May, he gave me my gift and I'm going to try it on right here for y'all. And then we're going to get to the show. So, one thing that me and him went to see that ruined my life that I loved from the 90s was this last Power Rangers movie, ladies and gentlemen. That shit was an atrocity. <laughs> Man, I mean, Lord, I would rather have the flu than to have seen that. <laughs> Make up for that pain. My man went and got me Power Rangers shirt. Look at that. Oh, 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 check this out. It's got a belt. It's got a belt. That's the best. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's the man. best. It's oh man! But, you you got you, you got to put it on for us. You got to put it on for us. Just put it on over top of your shirt. I got something else to put on. He oh, okay. That's not it. That's not it. And okay. So also gave me, ladies and gentlemen, a Power Rangers helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I can't. Let me open this bit right now. Now I can't tell you what he told me to do with it. He told me, you know, if I ever wanted to get freaky with the wife and we could play a little Ooh. game or two, I could put on this helmet and I could become a superhero. Green, Green Ranger, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm going to unbox this. We're going to open this the hell up and then we're going to try it on for all the ladies and James to see right here while we live. Well, right, they, to... they, wrap, they wrap up boxes good nowadays, man. They wrap this stuff up good. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take a screenshot of oh. us on here hey, man, on this my thing... phone, so I can post it on. I can make a post so I can tell the people we're on. So if I'm dealing with my phone, I'm not ignoring you. Oh, you good, man? This thing got instructions, man. What the hell? <laughs> what you have to put it together, <laughs> man? It's a helmet for crying out loud, man. They ain't supposed to have no instructions. <laughs> <laughs> God almighty. Let's see what we got Ooh. up in here. This is a humongous helmet. I think this will fit my big head. I think <laughs> this will fit on my head. Oh, snap. James, you the man, baby. You are the man. <laughs> oh, I want to see this thing on your head. All right. All right. So it's a, it comes with a, a limited edition stand. Look at that. 
a limited edition Green Ranger stand. I can't believe it. There you it. go. All right. And then, oh, my God, this dude here. Look, I'm about to put it on, man. I'm about to put it on right now. But first, <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That oh, is man. it. Right All right, so. Like I said, my man James was a big WWE fan. And so this is for all the people watching us that like WWE back in the day. This is going to be a tribute to Rick Rude specifically for James. So y'all ready? Let's do this. What I like to have right now is for all you fat, out of shape Republican <laughs> rednecks, sit down. <laughs> Be quiet while I put on this helmet and give the ladies what they want to see. A black man in a Power Rangers helmet. <laughs> there we go. Right there. Right there. That, that's your... I want to know is, is it N95 worthy? Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> where it is and not get the Rona. There you go. That is how you don't get the Rona right there. N95 worthy. <laughs> right, man. <laughs> that, that's my homeboy, James. That is my homeboy, James, man. Man, that's a good friend right there. Yeah, man. That's my homeboy, James. James, man, I don't know how to thank you. Bruh, I appreciate that, man. That's I appreciate a good friend that. right there. That's a good friend, man. I'm gonna have to get me another stand over here so that people can <laughs> see it, so that people can see my gear. Oh man, I, I, I am geeked out right now. But now let's get on back to the get on back to the show. <laughs> get on back to the show, man. Look, hey, I'm COVID nineteen ready, baby. I can put this on, and nothing is gonna get in there because I gotta tell you, I was about I couldn't breathe in that bitch. <laughs> it was hot, Bruh. <laughs> hey, I see why they was they was um saving people because you ain't getting through this helmet. Anyway, uh -huh. <laughs> getting on with the show, Madam C.J. Walker, ladies and gentlemen, Netflix did a story. It was produced by LeBron James, Bron, and, and the main character in the show that was playing Madam C.J. Walker, who I love and I can't think of her name right now. Golly, what is her name? Um, Octavia Spencer. Oh, did and, she play her? Yeah, she was Madam C.J. Walker. Okay. Now, it made a whole lot of controversy because that show took a whole lot of liberties on a whole lot of things. Now, they mm. did say that they did say that it was just getting the source material. This wasn't a documentary. It wasn't a historical documentary. Right, but right. The things they took liberties on had people upset bad. I mean, them women was in these streets, man. They was about to throw their hot curlers away. It was, boy, women was hot about this story. So <laughs> the, the nuts and bolts of the story, most people know C.J. Walker for being famous for the um, straight curler, the hot curler, whatever, the straightening yep. iron. And the first black millionaire. Come to find out some of that is not true. Ooh, people don't like that. Come to find out some of that is not true. So uh -oh. first and foremost, she did not invent the straightening iron. That's first and foremost. Mm. And in the story, they do let you know that she didn't invent that. So they did tell the truth about that. Okay. But she had a rival, an adversary in the story whose name was Anna, what was her, Addie Monroe. But okay. the reason why it was a controversy because her real name was Annie Malone. Hmm. And in the story, they portrayed her as the hot, light-skinned woman of that era. And they portrayed yeah. Madam C.J. Walker as a dark-skinned one. You know, back in the 1900s, it was hard on men, and it was hard. The darker you was, the harder it was on you. Yeah, it's still so they, like that today in some level. True. So they took liberties on that. And what the people who knew the history was upset about was, um, they never really had a rivalry about light skin versus dark skin. Oh. And so the lady, Annie Malone, winds up taking Madam C.J. Walker under her under her wing and came up with this um, cream to relax women's hair. OK. 
Okay. Right. And to relax. In, to relax the hair. And they portrayed it as though in the beginning, um, Madam CJ Walker was washing her clothes. <laughs> like her washer. And then right. she decided to give her a chance with her cream. CJ went out and sold the cream. And then they had beef because the light skinned chick didn't want CJ Walker to be the face of the corporation because during that era, the darker you are, dark? yeah, she was dark and you're unattractive. Is what is mm. what they alleged in the story, which is not the real truth. Okay. Right. So that was a point of contention. And mm. the people and the lady, um, um, Annie Malone, she's from St. Louis. And mm -hmm. they said she became a millionaire either before CJ Walker or around the same time as CJ Walker. Huh. And, and she was and she was a huge philanthropist in St. Louis. So when this came out, of course, it got them mad because they still do parades for this woman. She gave a lot of charity. She got buildings named after her. She gave a lot of money away throughout the story. But to okay. get to the nuts and bolts is this lady versus C.J. Walker throughout the whole story. And they really go in dialogue about how C.J. struggled in a man's world, basically, being a dark skinned, heavy set woman. Huh. And she had three husbands. And one husband used to beat her. Then she Ooh. got with C.J. Walker. C.J. Walker is actually the name of her husband. C.J. Walker that is referred to as a woman, her real name wasn't C.J. Walker, but she huh. used her husband's name because the only way you could you could get your business going during that era right. was to be a man. Right, her real right. name was Sarah Breedlove. Sarah Breedlove? Breedlove, yeah. Huh, okay. Yeah. That was her real name. And, so, right. and so throughout the story... Um, the husband and her fall out because she kept putting her business over the husband. Now, of mm. course, if you're having problems in your marriage, there's no excuse to go out and grind on a light skinned woman. And they portrayed that too. They portrayed him yeah. being in love with the light skinned honey, the light skinned honey deal. They just vilified the, the, the yellow girls, huh? Yeah. They vilified them heavy. And they also vilified the. They also kind of vilified her first, that second husband a little bit, okay. who was played by, um, damn it, why am I forgetting these people's names? But anyway, I'll figure it out in a minute. They Because during that era, it was wrong for a woman to be the head of the household and to be the primary breadwinner. Right. And so he was made to look like a little bitch because everywhere <laughs> he went, she tried to run the show. He didn't really have a whole lot of involvement other than being the advertising person. Okay. And throughout the whole series he was pretty much tried and true to her and a lot of times he just wanted her to give him some attention that she wasn't giving because she was giving it to the business okay which corralled him blair underwood thank you kina my blair old underwood. All right. yeah, blair underwood oh, so some, of, some of you out there have seen this yeah yeah okay yeah 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 and so long story short in the very end the light-skinned lady that was a rival to cj walker decided she was going to sue C.J. Walker because C.J. Walker stole her recipe for straightening hair. Huh. And what people was mad about that for in real life was C.J. Walker didn't steal the recipe, but they dramatized that in the story mm. because um, um, Addie Monroe's um, straightening cream smelled like sulfur. Oh, C.J. Walker in the story came up with her own and it didn't stink. Okay. And in real life, she never stole that chick's recipe. Okay. But then going back to real life again, Addie Monroe, I mean, um, Annie, Annie Malone, which is her real name, really huh. was the one that came up with the hot, the straight, the hot, the hot straight cone. She really okay. came up with that. But Madam C.J. Walker made it famous. Yeah, and sometimes that's what matters. Exactly, and that's what this was. So having said all those things, giving you all those stereotypes, Larry, and the people out there watching, give us your commentary, Larry. Tell us what you think, because I know you're about to go in. I mean, I have to see this, but, you know, it sounds like there's a whole lot of vilification of, 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 of the red bones going on, and uh, the fact that I'm married to one, I don't like it. Leave the red bones alone. They work hard. They're black just like the rest of us, you know? Yeah, but they're, they're black because 
them slave masters was dipping out in them slave houses when they thought that those women weren't even humans, but they put their penises in them. Right, right. And can you imagine how horrible that was? I mean, Man, I guess. Whew. I'm, I'm about, not sure you can get into that. Man, no, but I always tell people the strongest entity on earth in terms of humans is the African-American woman. That's period. right. They, they were on the bottom of everything. Now they have completely turned that circle around and are leading the nation in education. Yeah. I mean, as far as being educated, they are no joke. Okay. They are no joke. Okay. So it's, you know, the whole Madam C.J. Walker thing, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really known a whole lot about her story other than the surface stuff that, that, that most people know. Like she, you know, she created the hot comb. You know, she was working on the the hair growth solution or whatever it was. Right, hair right, growth. right. Um, you know that she was a so that she was supposed to be the first black millionaire. Um, the, now they did say in the story, truthfully speaking, she not only was she the first black millionaire, she was the first she was the first self made woman millionaire. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was interesting. They did. I saw something not long ago. They talked about what her wealth was relative, you know, and, and with, you know, with, um, you know, compensation for, for, yeah, for today. And it was, I mean, it was, it was an enormous amount of money. It was, it was just an enormous amount of money. Now I'm, and I'm with Kina who says she actually enjoyed it. Don't think that they vilified the light skinned chicks at all. And I will say the story was entertaining. Okay. I did get a little bit of a feel like it was a play, like they might have filmed this shit at Tyler Perry Studios or something. I did get was kind it of that. Production? I did kind of get that feel. Oh no, but, it was a brawny. It was a brawny production. Yeah, yeah, it was a brawny production. But I did enjoy. I was entertained. It was okay. very entertaining, and they they did in the very beginning say this is not actual historical correct. Right, it is. Right. They got the sources from this. You know, okay. and so, but I could understand why people who felt like they they had their people vilified could be upset, right? You know, so they didn't want people getting butt hurt, so they let them know right up front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now, where, where where can you see this at? It's on Netflix. Netflix, and what is it called? Do you remember? Um, it is called Self Made: The Madam C.J. Walker Story, and the overall, yep, the overall message though was a good one. Um, because a lot of what they did talk about had some credence. Madam CJ, it was on my front page. That's it. That's it. It was on my front page. All right, yeah. I'm gonna get that. Yeah, you gotta check it out, man. It's a great inspiration for women. Um, it's a great inspiration for African American women, and anyone who's in business who keeps getting told no, this woman in times that are way harder than it is now, she made it happen, man. She made it happen. Well, that's cool, man. I'm gonna check that out. It see, it sounds like a, it sounds like a serious, seriously good movie. It's 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 a good it's good, but you got to take it for that. It's not completely factually true, but right. the inspiration did come from C.J. Walker's story. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I know sometimes people get all bent out of shape about stuff not being, you know, overly factual. But mm -hmm. part of me is just like it, movies are meant to be entertaining. They're meant to be fun. And so, you know, if if sometimes stories, especially historical pieces, sometimes are, they can be too serious. And if you tell the truth about everything, either it's just not as exciting or it's too serious to be really fun. Mm -hmm. And and so you have to go ahead and spice it up. Sometimes you give people extra characteristics they don't have. Sometimes, you you know, you hype something up that wasn't necessarily, you know, as big of a deal. Like the relationship, maybe they did have a little bit of a rivalry, but maybe it was just a friendly rivalry, and maybe it wasn't that big of something. And they, you know, they blew it up to something bigger because they needed it for TV, you right. know, for the, for the show. So I mean, I'm telling you, you'll enjoy it now. And right. like I keep telling my wife, when they finally decide to do the Real Housewives of North Carolina or the the Doctors' Wives of North Carolina, I told her, I got a script. <laughs> you have a script. You got ready. a script. But I can't say it because she do, she does not want me to let y'all know what my script is, and she don't really want to do it. But I got a script. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. Y'all know my heart. 
And anything y'all would see me do on entertainment purposes, that's not me. That's not me. It wouldn't be me one bit. But oh. moving right along, let's let's jump on to my girl Angela Bassett. I was trying to find this show that that since we were talking about shows, I was trying to find this show. You go and bring on the the other one. I was trying. A friend of mine last night told me about a TV series that's on. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Right. That looked really really interesting. I can't remember the name of it now, but um, it just looked like it was a lot of fun. And I was like, I think I'm gonna. I was like, I'm gonna mention it to you today, but I need to find it. So go do your thing, and I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and find that. Let me shout out some people. 351 Cleveland, what's up? Support Game in 2020, what's down? Kena, you all over the place, and we're glad to have you here. And you know, my man Tim Windsor, we've got to get Tim Windsor up here as a third wheel. So we just got to. We have to. We we got we got to do it, man, because that guy support. When I when you say support, nobody, yeah. and I mean nobody, supports a YouTube channel like Tim. And we want to see this man get his own YouTube because I think that he could be popular like that. You know? Yep, like that. What's going on? I'm subscribing right here already. Mm hmm So now, folks, we're going to jump into Angela Bassett. It's going to do a biopic, and she's got two women that she wants to play her, and one of them is from Power. And, Larry, I'll give you one guess on the Power chick. Oh, is it Tasha? It's Tasha, baby. Notori, <laughs> not. She wants. She would love to have her play it. And the really? other person is the actress Annika Rose. I don't know who that is. Who, what, what was the other one? Annika Rose. Annika Rose. I'm not sure I know that one. I don't know her either, man. I've, I've never heard of her. Um, I like Tasha. I know some of y'all don't like Tasha all that hot. <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> I, okay. I mean, I like I like Tasha, but I'll be honest with you, I have a hard time seeing her as um, as Angela Bassett. I feel like if she was going to do and play Angela Bassett, she's going to have to lose some weight. You're right, you you because Angela Bassett got guns, baby. Hold yeah, on. she and it's not it's not. I'm not trying to say that being funny style like 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 Tasha's chubby or fat or anything, but it's just Angela Bassett is straight up ripped. Yeah, yeah, she you know? she. She got some guns on her, man. She got some guns on her. Um, but if between those two, I want to know from my subscribers and everybody watching, which one of those two would be a better role for Angela Bassett? Annika Rose or Tasha from Power? I need and, to look up Annika Rose. Let me go find my let me let me pull open my uh let me grab my uh my IMDB and see if I can find her. Oh yeah, Annika Rose, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. My wife came out the room to tell me it's Anika, not Annika. I'm trying to make a Russian. Anika. Anika Rose. <laughs> Anika Noni Juice Rose. Okay, Anika, Anika Rose. Rose, man. Dad. Can we have this show? I see Anika Rose. Can we have this show? Can you get back in that room and stop trying to give me your, your English education, wherever you got your education from? <laughs> get out of here, man. Thanks. Thank you, though. I see her. I'm trying to remember where I've seen I'm trying to think if I've seen her in anything. She so, looks vaguely familiar. Kina said she played the bad Duke cop in power. Oh. Oh, oh. is that her? Oh, oh, she, oh, she was in set at all. Well, she in set at all. Isn't she the same woman from Snowfall too, right? Snowfall, Snowfall, Snowfall. I don't think so. Let's see. She she was jukebox. She was jukebox. And she also played in Colored Girls and Dream Girls. And I swear she was in set it off. Okay, Let's never see. mind. Never mind. But I would rather see her play Angela Bassett. Yeah. And it's weird Angela Bassett picked two people from power. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's funny. When I first saw her on power, I kept thinking I could I recognize that voice. And because she played uh she played in that the animated series Vixen. She was okay. in that she was in there. So I was like, I know that voice. Okay. Um, yeah, well, definitely my vote go to her over over Tasha. I like them both. I like them I like both. them both. 
Hold on, I forgot to plug my computer in. Let me go plug it in before I, we end up getting cut off. Oh man, here he go. T Tim want me to get you fired up and started. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Why are you guys trying to get me fired up? <laughs> and so everybody so far is saying that they think um, jukebox is a better pick, and I have to agree with y'all, man. Uh, she could probably do that role a whole lot better. I'm definitely on. I'm definitely down with y'all on that one. I'll tell. I like. I like her for that role. I need to find the actress that played. Uh, there was this on that show. Do, do any of you watch uh, Snowfall? I I've, I've been. I watched three episodes. Snowfall. All right. Let me see, let me find the actress on here. I'm I'm pulling up my IMDb. Oh, you good? Priscilla and, Williams said, "Have y'all seen The Invisible Man?" Yes, we and, have. And Priscilla, check in my movie reviews 2020. I done that with uh, Nicole Austin. She did the review with me for that movie, and you might find that very entertaining. But it's in my um, go check my my page on YouTube, and it's in the 2020 movie reviews. All right, so Angela Lewis, that's the actress's name. That's in Snowfall. I like her for the Angela for the Angela Bassett role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you guys haven't if you haven't checked her out, look check her out. I think she would be great too. So yep. now now we're getting into the grimy stuff that people want to hear. Now that we done got some of the educational stuff out the way, here we go. Then let's go go on ahead and get into that dirt. Let's get into that here moment, we, baby. Because you know. Go. You know, there's a saying that old people say, because, you know, old people wise now, especially them old black grandma, they wise. <laughs> they, say, they say a hit dog will holler. Yeah. Yeah. We've got beef between Cardi B and Idris Elba. And I think, <laughs> I, I think a hit dog, I think a dog done been hit because it's hollering. Because it's hollering. Yep. Yeah. Check this out. Cardi B dropped the post. Well, first of all, let's go through the history. Idris okay. Elba got tested. He has COVID-19. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. So his wife decides she's going to stay home quarantine. She ain't doing nothing. He put a, PA, a PSA out there telling people, chill out, stay home, take the precautions, don't get sick. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So <clears throat> Cardi B comes out and she says, and I quote from my non tweaky touching hands right here. I don't touch Twinkies no more. <clears throat> Cardi B says, I think celebs is running around saying that they have coronavirus and are lying. They just getting paid. And they're Ooh. doing that to get people to stay home. Famous people have a wider reach and influence, which is why she thinks they're doing it. Now, who's paying who? See, see, you that's this, where it starts to fall apart. Who's paying who? You see, but see, you 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 have intelligent, rational thought process, my brother. <laughs> that's all I want to know is you, who you, is paying who? You, you think with intelligence and rationale. Okay. <laughs> Idris Elba, he clapped back. What did he say? Put you in your girl. <laughs> <laughs> Idris Elba clapped back and said, this is not a matter of who's rich, who's getting the test, who's not. This is a matter of safety. I got yeah. the test. I had COVID. I'm staying home. And we shouldn't be debating, having this type of debate because it's not healthy. Right. People should heed the warnings and stay home. That's what he said. I can respect that. I can respect that. People should stay home. And and I mean, she is right to some, to, to some extent that 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 celebrities do have a greater reach in most cases mm -hmm. than the average citizen. If, right. if one of us posts something, you know, there's going to be some people that see it. We might reach a, we might reach a few thousand people, but they post something they could, they could very easily reach a few million people. Now, so, and, and, to, and while we're just kind of talking about the coronavirus people, let me tell y'all a story. <laughs> Because a lot of businesses are shut down. A lot of restaurants are doing call in order. You pick it up or they deliver to you. And nothing right. that's okay. Ain't that right, Larry? Yep. The, the, what do they call it? Curbside delivery. Curbside delivery. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you own a restaurant right now, you're watching this very famous YouTube channel, this very famous YouTube duo, the Lamont and Larry show. <laughs> Can you please make the hell sure that whoever you got answering the phone does not sound like Biggie Small and coughing every three minutes. It's almost like, oh, girl, can I take you <laughs> order? Because <laughs> that builds confidence right there. That's well, exactly what you want to hear. If I call your restaurant right now and it sounds like Biggie Small is deep breathing, I'm not ordering. <sighs> I, I mean, look. I'm not saying nothing funny about nobody, okay? Oh. I'm just saying in a time like this, you can't be sounding like you're about to have an asthma attack taking no. some order. You know, no. that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's yeah, all. Yeah, you, you, you need to you need to make sure that your people are healthy when you're when they're when they're answering the phone. You right. know. So if not, tell them to, to make that cough and then answer the phone. So in terms of getting back to what Cardi B said, I'm gonna give my opinion. Right. I, I think that there, I think that there could be some truth in what she's saying, but I don't think it's that people are getting paid. I yeah. think some people are doing it for publicity. Period. Right. You know, yeah. um, I, I would have took, I would took her comments better if she would have just simply said, "I think that some of these people might not have it. They're doing it for publicity." But either way, the reason why they're why they might be doing it, the end result is you're trying to get people to stay home. Right. So if you go through what she said, the fact that she's saying it can come off the wrong way that she's attacking people who are trying to get people to stay home. You know, yeah. Um I, there is some truth in what she's saying, but I don't think I don't think nobody's paying them. And maybe some people are fit, you know, fudging stuff up to make themselves feel better to ease their conscience. But at the end of the day, if it helps people stay home and be safe and not spread this thing, I'm for that. And, yeah. and, and the way Idris Elba clapped back, it was very professional. I mean, he, he could have went in if he wanted to, but I think he kind of understands what she was trying to say. And just right. took it as, you know, it, we shouldn't be debating about that. Right. I, I mean, you're right in, in that I think that there may be some of them that are out there doing stuff, just trying to get some, just trying to get some attention. Maybe they're trying to get some, you know, trying to get some social media props. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they are, let's be real. These are celebrities. They got into the business in part because they may enjoy their, their craft. If they're singers or, or, or musicians, they may just have gotten into it because they love their craft. But a lot of people get into it because they want, attention they want to be famous they want to be popular and mm -hmm. and when you are when you're out there and you don't have the ability to be out there you know performing and 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 doing your shows and doing all of the other stuff that you do well you have social media and you can get on there and you can still get lots of attention by by washing your hands and telling people to stay indoors or or doing little you know uh living room concerts and stuff and and I'm sure there's people out there that are doing it for the gram. There may be some people out there that are getting paid to do certain things. There may be, you know, maybe that some of their some of their posts are sponsored or whatever. That I mean, that's a that's 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 a probability. But I don't think that people are out there. I don't think the celebrities are out there promoting <laughs> stay at home and getting paid for it and making it seem worse than it is. I think they're just trying to be responsible citizens because if they don't say anything then people will criticize them and say, why aren't these celebrities saying anything? They have such a huge platform and they're not using it, you know? So, I mean, they're kind of damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. That's true. Um, and here's the other issue with that. Celebs seem to have greater access to these tests. That's what Priscilla Williams is saying. You, you said that too, Larry. Right. And with, with us knowing that, I think it is almost their duty knowing that they have access to the test to tell or try to promote people to do the right thing that they can do if you don't have the access to get the test, which is stay home. Right. You right. Know? So <laughs> Sterling says Stringer Bell's my man. He's in a $20 million mansion with a supermodel. Lock me up like that. <laughs> hey, you, you know what? Um, 
<laughs> it is what it is, man. He probably ain't got to go nowhere to get nothing anyway. <laughs> you know, he's a he, yeah. I'm sure he's squared away, but yep. And so I mean, I, I get it. There, there. I mean, when you have people out there that are that need to be out, you know, like I've been debating whether or not I'm going to go to the grocery store tomorrow. You know, because mm -hmm. there's a few things that we need, and you know, we were looking at ordering some stuff online. <laughs> Excuse me, but you know, the prices online are, are, are not the same. They're, they're not as good as if you go into the grocery store and buy stuff. There's a lot of sales. There's a lot of things you can get multiples of for, for discounted prices if you go into the store. And they don't even show all that, you know, or it's not always available to order when, you, when you're ordering through, you know, whatever Safeways thing or Peapod or, or, you know, Amazon Fresh or something. So, you know, I'm just, I've been debating, but I'm trying to figure out what's the best time to go where I don't have to be in there with a bunch of people. So, so can I, I ask know. you a question? Can yeah. I ask you a question? Because I know you want to stay social distance and everything like that. Uh huh. You know, and I do fully understand um, the oppressiveness some of us African American males have in the South because I live in the South. Right. If I want to go in the grocery store, can I legitimately go in there like this? <laughs> you know, you should. That's just that that's your Rona gear right there. That's your Rona head gear right there. You know? Mm -hmm. And you should put a little get a little uh sticker you can take off that says N19 N95 certified. <laughs> Oh, oh damn. Now, let me tell you something. If I pass by a police officer with this helmet on in a Tesla, you know, forget Ooh. it. I'm getting pulled over. Hell, they, probably, they, they, might they, even the whole, they might not even see that you're black if you have everything covered up. That's a good point. You know, that, that's a good point. And hey. they probably wouldn't believe that a black person would wear all that. So they might just assume you were some rich white kid. <laughs> that might we might be on something here. I'm wearing this to protect myself. <laughs> I'm wearing this for protection. You know, that's why I would wear it, man. That's why I would wear it. Now, you said Prince Harry got um coronavirus, right? No, no, Prince Charles, the old one. Oh, the older one, the one yeah, he's he's the current heir to the throne. He's got the Rona. Oh, and, yeah, he's uh, the one that need Rogaine, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need, oh, no, yeah, okay. no. Well, yeah, he needs Rogaine a little bit, but so does his son. His because you know he's got the two sons. The redhead's the one that married uh, Meghan Markle, and then the older son is the one that's uh, that's the next in line after his dad. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay, but, he, uh, but you know, I mean, it's uh, I mean, he's a royal. He's old. I mean, it's I guess it's always dangerous because when you're old like that, I mean, the dude's seventy something years old. He's seventy. But, yeah, he's 70 something years old. So, I mean, it's dangerous anytime you get someone who's old like that. But the reality of it is, he has access to the finest healthcare that he's going to be able to get in the UK. Mm -hmm. You know? And in all reality, if he needed something better, I mean, absent some other world leader that's more important coming down with the Rona, I'm sure they can send a private jet out to, to fly in the best respiratory therapist and. Hey. and Hey, now, now, now I'll let them, I'll contract out for that. <laughs> <laughs> I still got that respiratory license. I will contract out. They want to fly me to England, show me the royal, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> help me understand the royal traditions because I still know how to work a ventilator. Do, 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 boop. You know? I still know how to innovate. Uh, 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 uh. I'm in there. I'm in the airway. I still know how to do all that stuff. <laughs> sure do. Oh man, I hope you have a ventilator you kept from back in the day. I hope you have one in your in your basement somewhere. They don't let you take them home, bro. And I never, <laughs> when I was doing the outpatient business, I never had to use that equipment. Okay, you know, I didn't have. To, I do have a percussor. I do have some of the other the, the CO two my. I got all the other stuff, but I right. never did anything with the ventilator because typically, if you have to have a home ventilator, you're going to already have it. Okay. So All when right. you go to the house to do vent management, airway management, that type stuff, it's going to already be there. Yeah. Yeah, man. 
So let us move on. And then after this, the show is wide open for anything y'all want to talk about. Yeah. Last thing we're going to cover is they passed the $2 trillion bill. Who can get money and who can't? Larry, what do you know about this bill? Man, F this bill. That's <laughs> some bullish, man. Be more careful. That's yeah. some bullish. I know people out there want their free money, but it's not free. I'm just telling you right now. I wrote to both of my senators today and said, please, please, please do not vote in favor of this bill. It just gives way too much to business. And here's my thought on this, all right? Here's my thought. Now, I know people are going to think I'm crazy for it, but whatever. First of all, it's only giving you $1,200 per person in your per adult, I guess, or $2,400 per family if you earn less than, I think it's $150,000 a year or something like that. If you earn more than $75,000 as an individual, then you're not getting it. So, mm -hmm. so Lamont... Your family's done. Unless you guys file separately, you guys are done. You're not getting jack diddly. So I don't even know. I don't even need to know how much you earn. All I know is that your wife is a doctor. So you guys are probably making more than the threshold. So, you know, and, and what I'll say is that when you look at how much money they're giving towards business versus towards the, the average citizen, it's, I mean, it's right now they're talking about $2 trillion. Mm-hmm. And and out of that two trillion, I believe about one point two five or something like that, or or a little bit more is going towards businesses, and maybe about five hundred, about five hundred billion is going towards uh towards small businesses. Business. Small yeah. business is supposed to get five hundred billion. Right. Well, you're they're supposed to get five hundred billion. There's another. There's another like five hundred billion going to regular like larger businesses, and I think there's something like. What was it? Two or three hundred billion that's, that's set aside just for airlines. Yeah, and but here's, here's the issue, man. The the the, the two five hundred billions. Those are not going to be given. Those are fucking loans, and they given the money to the air. They didn't put restrictions on the airline money. But here's the thing: we're going to have to pay that money back. Even let's just say out of the two billion, let's just say that out of that. Let's say the American people have to pay back half of it. Let's say that the half of it are loans. We still have to pay for the trillion. I mean, well, I mean, let's just be realistic. We're going to have to pay for all that two trillion because, I mean, all of that two trillion dollars, we don't have it. We're going to have to borrow it, and which means there's going to be interest on two trillion dollars. It's going to. We're going to end up having to pay for all that. And for every person who's getting twelve hundred dollars, you know, let's just hear. I'm going to do. I'm going to let Google do some math. Just so we can see how ridiculous this is. So let's just see. Let's say, let's see, what is it? We're talking about uh we're talking about two trillion dollars. And there's there's 300, what, 327 million people in the US? Is that what it is that where we're at? 330. 330 million people in this country. All right. Mm -hmm. Google, what is Two trillion divided by three hundred and thirty million. Good God Almighty! It's a number I don't even want to talk about. So we're talking about right there. I don't know if you can see that, but we're talking about six thousand and sixty dollars. So for every U.S., if we have, if we're, if we're going into debt two hundred two trillion dollars, that means that every U.S. citizen is going to have to come out of pocket six thousand dollars to pay back that two trillion dollars and that's assuming that there is no interest on the debt oh so bro and I, I know but and, and so but let's just say let's just say that half of that is tossed out let's just say half of that is loans that that get actually get paid back mm -hmm. that still means that every citizen is paying three thousand dollars to pay back that debt but let's be real about this Every citizen is not gonna is is not paying taxes because let's say let's say that a third of our population is under 18, so they don't really and they're not working, so they're not paying taxes. And then you have people that are that are that are poor or they don't make enough money, so they don't make enough money to actually pay federal income tax. So let's just say that's another 10 to 15 percent of the population. Mm -hmm. You know, so now you have all the corporations 
and all the rich people who don't pay federal tax anyways because they find all kinds of, they do all kinds of shenanigans and, and, and they have all kinds of tax shelters and everything. So they're not paying any taxes anyways. So who's that leave? That leaves the middle class folks, the ones who are making over 75,000 a year who are not gonna get the $1,200 in the first place. It leaves all of us to have to pay back the two motherfucking trillion dollars that the rich people are getting and the poor people are getting. We have to pay for all that shit. Which is, mean, why, which is why I always complain about how the rich, the S&P 500, my stock folks know what I'm talking about. I always get mad at how they have been able to paint this menagerie of capitalism and how they're just hardworking fucking capitalists. They tie their bootstraps up, they put their pants on one leg at a time, and they pop out their wonder bras when they go work out. They do all the things that us middle class people do. And no, they no, they don't. I always have said, if you are going to tax the American people, you need to be putting things in place that all the American people can utilize. Right. That's why I'm, I don't mind everybody getting health care. Hell, I had Medicaid as a child or I might, my asthmatic ass would have died. Right. If you are going to tax the people, at least spend it on the things the American people need. Right. Stop this foolishness that the Republicans have been able to push of tax and cut, because when they do cut, they're never cutting. You, you can't cut from the poor and you're not cutting from the rich because that's who's paying their bills. They only cut the middle class, which is the bigger percentage of the pie of people running these little communities. And that's why I get fired up about this. It's just, it's, never, they are never going to not stop taxing you. I don't care what politician get in front of a camera and say that they're going to stop. They're going to cut tax. Cut. They are never, ever, ever going to stop taxing you. Right. And if they're going to tax you, you might as well utilize it for the greater good of all the people in America. Right. Mark Tyson, 2040. Right. <laughs> And in and, and all seriousness, too, I mean, really, there. I mean, the amount of money that they are going to take out, the, the amount of money that we're going to have to borrow to pay for this two trillion dollar stimulus package, the American, the, the middle class American taxpayer is going to have to pay back. Probably for for the, oh, to cover that two trillion dollars, we're probably the American middle class taxpayer is probably going to, have to pay back closer to. Uh, to ten to twelve thousand dollars every single tax rate, and probably more than that, because if we if, because if we spent again, like I showed, it would it would take six thousand dollars for every single U.S. taxpayer in order to pay back that two trillion dollars, and that's assuming that there's no interest, which we know there will be, mm -hmm. and we also know that there's probably going to be less than half of the population that's going to pay to go back towards that two trillion dollars, which means it's all going to be on or the bulk of it is going to be on the middle class. And, and so now, I mean, you take that six million or that $6,000 that, that each American would have to pay. And now you cut half of those people out. Now you're talking about $12,000 that each per that each middle class taxpayer is going to have to fork out in order to pay back that $2 trillion. I just think it's bogus. Yeah, it's, it's Let ridiculous. Think, it's think or swim. I, I mean, I, I, I know that's terrible, but guess what? They keep they, when all this stuff was going on when they first started talking about they were gonna have to people were gonna have to get off of work. We had all these Republicans up there saying people should have they should have nest eggs. She people should be okay. They should be able to last for for a couple of weeks or a couple of months with their savings. Well, most people don't have savings because most people live check to check in this country. I think I'm lucky and blessed, like you probably are lucky and blessed that we have money set aside so that if something goes wrong in our lives, we can actually survive for a while. But the reality of it is, is that most people don't. Well, these companies that are multi-billion dollar companies, if they stopped paying their CEOs hundreds of millions of dollars and giving people golden parachutes and doing stock buybacks so that they can raise their stock prices and get and pay people higher dividends, if they just simply said, our operating costs are $10 million a month. We need to go ahead and set set aside, you know, 30, 40, or 60 million dollars so that we can actually operate in the event that we're dark. But they won't do that. Because what happens is even if they did set it aside, somebody would come in and say, We have 60 million dollars sitting over here that's not doing anything. We should go ahead and use that 60 million to buy back some stock so we can raise our stock prices and then and then pay out higher dividends. Well, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, but then you do that now you have no now you have no no nest egg you, i mean no uh no emergency fund and then something happens with your industry and now you're up there just asked out begging the government for money <clears throat> and what you know? makes this, what makes this worse is small businesses have it real tough small businesses typically are running a line of credit month to month so that they can keep the flow of the business going how do i know i've run a couple of them and usually you have that flow, that, that credit line flowing because your revenues don't come in all at the same time, but your bills, they pretty much come in at the same damn time. Right. So you keep that cash flow going and you try to pinch off a piece and put something to the side or you invest in a huge asset in the building like I did with, um, I invested in the building itself so that if the worst case scenario happened, I had me an escape route. You mean to tell me that the airlines ain't got no damn escape route and we about to give them unfiltered money, but they keep, but they love the CEOs love to get in front of a camera and tell you capitalism is the greatest thing since sliced bread met right. butter. Let them, let them feel it. The Republicans are all about free market capitalism. Well, let them experience it. Let them mm -hmm. experience, you know, true free market capitalism. I mean, when this is stuff that, you know, this coronavirus, this pandemic, stuff like this is what happens in the free market. You have you have things that happen outside of your control. And if you have not planned for them financially, your business will go under. Mm. It sucks. Your employees will, you know, will suffer as a consequence. But mm. you know what happens is if that if they don't bail these people out and they allow these businesses to go under, what happens is, is that somebody else will come in and fill the void there will be other airlines that will make it other ones will pop up as new airlines they will serve they'll come in and fill that void employers you know the employers will need employees so they'll start picking people and because employees will for a while they may be desperate and they'll just take whatever job they can get but at, at some point employees are going to say hey I don't want to go through this again. I want to know what your business practices are. I want to mm -hmm. know if you're the type of company that's putting away money for a rainy day. Right. I want to know I want to know that I will have job security if something happens and you will have the best employees going to the best employers. And and eventually these these companies just like they have had to do with healthcare. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't offer good healthcare with these companies, you're not going to get the best employees. You know, right. you have to have good benefit packages. Otherwise, there's, I mean, there's been plenty of people I've heard say, yeah, so-and-so offered me, you know, 10 or 12 or $15,000 more a year, but the other people had a way better benefits package. So I went with the benefits package because they understand that that package is worth more than, than $15,000 that's going to be taxed anyways. So, and, and I'm, and that's the other thing that businesses learned back in the 1930s, how to hamstring workers. That's pretty much when they started putting healthcare and dividend stocks in place back during that era. And you hamstring people because you know some people are just gonna come to work for the healthcare because without it, they're screwed. To right. me, that stifles innovation. That stifles someone who could come out here with the next great idea to make my life and your life better because they don't wanna leave because they're scared they might get sick or they might have right. a pre existing condition like I do with asthma. Right. Yeah, I mean, you just you you're up there and you're working at a job that you probably shouldn't be working at because you hate it, and you're probably doing the 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 minimum to get along at that job. Whereas, like yep. you said, you may have the next great idea, and all you need is time to develop it. You may mm -hmm. say, okay, well, you know what, I can work a part time job just to pay my bills, and then I can fund my my idea and do this on the side. But if I do that, I'll lose my health insurance, and I don't want to die, so I'll stay right. at my current job. Right. That shouldn't be the case. Shouldn't it shouldn't be a case in an economy that has this much wealth. That should not be the case. And we definitely should not start handing out freaking checks to businesses who didn't plan for what everyone knew was an, uh, an eventuality. Everyone knew there was going to be <coughs> another big health issue in this country. We we've, we've had them. We've had them in the past. We had it when there was SARS. They had it. What well, they had it was H one N one. They Zika. had the, the, yeah, the Zika, swine flu, the you know Ebola. They they've had so many of these instances that have happened that it's not like I know that I know I know Trump keeps sitting up there and saying, "Oh, no one could have known this was going to happen. No one would have ever thought this was going to happen. No one saw this coming." That's bull. Everyone saw it coming. 
he, the only one who didn't see it coming was him because he fired the whole damn pan, pandemic response team because he didn't want to see it. Larry, Stevie Wonder saw this coming. <laughs> I, I mean, bruh, everybody's seen it coming. But back to your boy Trump, he did that. His major piece of legislation was the tax bill that he did that gave the rich people all kinds of leeway. And you right. know what they did with that money? They bought back the stock, which drove up the price. So every economist I know, even the Republicans were saying we was going to hit a recession because right. a lot of those businesses bought those stocks. And you, you raised the price when you bought those stocks. Right. And so a lot of economists were saying that was a bubble that was going to pop anyway. And look what came along and popped it, the coronavirus. Yep. Yep. And now they're trying to boost the market back up. They're trying to, you know, because they're they're talking about the stimulus package. I mean, it's it, this this is what happens, right? This is what happens every time we have a Republican president. Every time. They they they, they f up they f up the economy. <coughs> they f up the economy. They do some ridiculous stimulus package and I mean, let's just be clear. The last time we had a Republican president, we had the same sort of gimmick. We had we had Bush sending us out freaking checks, sending us out four hundred dollar checks because of nine eleven or some BS. I don't know what I mean. It was whatever that was. He sent us out checks for, but it's it's and then the economy is, it goes back into the dumper, and then you have, then and then they elect a a Democrat, and he comes in, he fixes the economy, he gets it going, he gets us back on solid footing. And the economy's in such good shape that it can basically run on autopilot for the next six to eight years. And, and the Republicans use that time to F it up again. And like by the I time said, they get out of office and hand it back to a Democrat, the, the economy is in the, is in the crapper again. And they have to go through the whole cycle all over again. Like I said, man, rich people and Republicans love themselves a crisis. Yeah. Love it. So, now, I think we done burnt everybody out on the politics. because Boy, they down there talking about TV shows, man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I see. You're about to run them away. But <laughs> my folks, I, I, I ain't forget about you, Miss Priscilla Williams. I hope you're still here because I'm, I'm about to jump on you right, real quick. Priscilla Williams thinks that I am a Panthers fan and Cam about to go. Luke Keekley retired. And now she done got Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. <laughs> I will have you know, Miss Priscilla, I am a fan of the Miami Dolphins. The reason why y'all see me wearing so many different teams' hats is because my wife, for whatever the reason, it took her 17 tries to get the right team. And, you know, <laughs> me being the good husband that I'm supposed to be, I never said, honey, I'm not going to wear your hats. I just said, honey, wrong team, wrong team, wrong team. <laughs> and, you know, keep going, keep going till you get to 17. And then, bam, there's the Dolphin gear right there. Y'all see there that? There you go. There's the Dolphins gear right there, along with some Marvel, some Black Panther, and Nintendo, because I am a black nerd. I hide <laughs> none of that. And, and that's where we're at with that. Um, I don't care about Tom Brady. I'm glad he's gone. I wanted him yeah. out of my division. Um I hope this is the demise of Tom Brady. I said it right here, and I don't care who hear it. I'm so sick of Tom Brady. I'm so I'm so sick of the New England Patriots and those cheating ways because people try to make it sound like we shouldn't call them out for getting caught cheating. Not one time, not two times. We caught them cheating three times, and we're supposed to just turn the blind eye like they haven't been doing that the whole time. Yeah. Now. I mean and now I know some people have tried to say everybody's cheating, which is probably true. That's probably true. But mm -hmm. when you get caught, you need to be made an example of swift and fast. You know, this is the thing, right? Cheating, not cheating. I mean, he's cheated. He still has had a really, a really great career. Yeah, he has. You know? He has, <laughs> which is he another reason why career. I hate he should have had that one Super Bowl snatch from him for for cheating, but they didn't. But but he's had a great career. The thing that I don't understand about him, and not just not just Brady, but other other great players that do this too, is why why not just retire? Don't don't decide. Okay, I'm going to leave and go to some other random team 
and go play for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden you look like you were the greatest ever. And now you're on some crap team who can't win, can't even get a winning season in. Larry. And now you look like just an average player. Larry. And you start to tarnish your, you start to tarnish your legacy. Larry, it's for the money. I know, but dude is wealthy already. There is no need to go in there. I mean, go go coach. Larry. You want to go someplace else, go coach. Larry, his wife makes more money than him each year. No. No, why you better looking at him too? You got to keep getting them duckies, man. Nobody, nobody is gonna remember the bitter end. They only remember your greatness. When they do, when you see Sports Center highlights of everybody who's been great, they splash in the low points maybe once every twenty segments. Everybody remembers you for your greatness. If you was as great as he was, I so, remember Jordan in his garbage, uh, his garbage end of his career. And you know how much he got paid for those last two years? A lot, but it was garbage. It, it don't matter. He's still considered the greatest ever. He should have left. You do it for the money. Went back to baseball. Nah, bro. Baseball won't go pay him a million dollars. He could have fun at least. Basketball paid him $45 million each season his last two seasons. Jeez. See, so, see exactly. You rubbing Jeez. your head. You would have came back too. Hell, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I would have came back. I would have came back just to sit on the bench for $45 million. Yeah, I have to admit, for $45 million, there's not a lot I wouldn't do. So, Larry, the people want to know, who do you like in football, if you like anybody? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Denver fan. Broncos, baby. My One of my top five favorite football players of all time is my old Uncle Shay Sharp. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Broncos fan. You know, it's funny that, um, you know, because I'm from L.A., so I was waiting for us to get a team. But, you know, I was I was heartbroken before when the, when the Raiders left. <laughs> and then I was just like, well, I couldn't be a Raider fan again because after all that, all the shenanigans that Al Davis pulled over the years, will they, won't they, will they, won't they come back and all that garbage, I was just like, man, I'm done with them. Okay. And Okay. You know, I waited for a long time. I waited for a long, long time hoping to get another team because we didn't have a team for like 18 years or something. It was a long time we didn't have a team. And and I finally just said, I'm gonna, I'm just going to roll with a different team. And so I picked Denver. And, and the funny thing was, right before the season, I said, I'm picking a new team. So I was like, I'm going with Denver since my in-laws are from Denver. And turned out that year they won a Super Bowl. So See? So there you go. I'm not um, mad at it. And the reason why I'm not a Carolina Panthers fan, even though it looks like I am, is because we didn't have a team when I was growing up either. We didn't have a team. So I gravitated to the Miami Dolphins. Um, I went The first city I ever went to to visit for vacation was in Miami, and I actually went to the Dolphins tryout. Nice. That was the you first the team? first place I ever took an airplane <laughs> to was Miami. First place. Nice. So, And I've been a fan ever since. But drinking a Corona. Yeah, yeah, yeah y'all know Larry be on that Rona. He you been know? on the Rona. That Rona juice. Yeah, he he been on the Rona. What He's, you don't know is that this is actually a vaccine. It's a Rona vaccine. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> here we go. That's why they call it Rona Extra. Here, here we go. <laughs> So, Larry, what did you what are you planning on watching so we can get the people on out of here for a day? What you gonna you be know, watching? I never, I, I never found that show. I was trying to remember the name of it. It's a show. I think it's on Amazon Prime. It's sort of like a, uh, it's sort of like a fantasy show. Um, oh, I think it's called, I think it's called Get the Message to the King or something like that. Okay. Or Message to the King, maybe that's what it is. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's called Message to the King. But it's basically about a group of kids, and there's a black kid that's like the mess that's like the main one um, who has to deliver this message to the king. Otherwise, there's gonna be some big war that's gonna erupt or something. But everybody's trying to stop him. And it's just like a big sort of like Game of Thrones fantasy type deal. Mm -hmm. So, but it looks like it's it looks like it's uh it looks like it's really good. Let's see if I can find. I think it's called Message to the King. Maybe it's on Netflix. I might have. But a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine on this uh, 
on this WhatsApp thread that I'm on with some friends from back home. Um, he said that he saw he said he saw the first episode. It came up. He said it came up on his uh, Facebook feed or something. And he saw the first episode, and he said he looked. He said he liked it. He said it looked like it was good. So he's gonna keep watching. So I went and watched the trailer, and it looked legit. So there is a movie. I, I, there is one I was thinking about watching. This show called um, I think it's not sure it's a movie or a series. It's called um, Valentine the Dark Avenger. See if I can get that up there. So okay. Okay, now, now you're there starting you to get Valentine the Dark Avenger. Okay, it's on, it's on Amazon Prime. So, for all you bootleggers out there, oh, I guess you man. either have to download it or get you a free trial of Amazon Prime because I don't think you can get it on you. Might, I mean, you can get it on all those apps, all the stuff is on there. It's stuff that we don't we don't deal with anymore, but you know. Oh, look, my folk dream music production said. You need to watch Dirty Money on Netflix. Hey, I Ooh. watched that. I watched season yep. one. I haven't watched season two yet, but yep. I did watch season one, and I loved it. I loved the episode where they went in on Trump. Yeah. And on season two, they've got Jared and how he got rich, how his daddy was crooked and racist and a slumlord, and, and how they bought too. 666 Park Avenue in New York. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah, yeah, this is, I mean, he's a, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, here it is. It's called Letter Letter for the King. This is it. It's called Letter for the King. There you go. It's on Netflix. So you can check okay. that out. But right. Dirty Money is good. I watched it, the whole thing with the, yeah, with, with, with Jared Kushner being a slumlord in all those apartments he has in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. and, um, and how they do people dirty where they, they they charge them all these fines and then they end up getting getting penalties on the fines so they never can get paid up. It's just it was it was, it was terrible what they were doing to those people. Yep. Yep. So, um and you know, people get away getting grimy in business like that oftentimes, you know. Right. So what are you watching? What do you have going? Man, so like sometimes when I'm when I'm done at the end of the day, especially right now with the coronavirus. I'll be TV'd out. Um, mm -hmm. And now that I'm back doing YouTube, I spend all my morning after I work out doing YouTube. And I just don't want to watch TV for a little while because a lot of times I'm reviewing what I've seen on YouTube, but I haven't done it this week. And I okay. just got back into doing my Tesla videos, try to build that audience back up um, and get that rolling again. But all I really have been watching, y'all, and I'm being honest, it's shameless. That's, I mean, <laughs> it, it's... It's quick, it's fun, and then when I go to sleep at night to help put me to sleep, I try to watch a comedy on YouTube or yeah. I watch some old WWE when it was real wrestling. Not wrestling, <laughs> wrestling. wrestling. <laughs> or I watch nerdy content talking about stars in space because I'm like I said, I'm a, I'm a nerd. However, yeah. watching that is not putting me asleep. I got to watch comedy, and to me, W wrestling was comedy. And then I'll try to catch like Trevor Noah, something like that on YouTube at nighttime too. Right. Now, has anybody out there, has anybody watched uh, Fifth Avenue, I believe it's called, that's on HBO? Fifth it's that Avenue. comedy that's set in, uh, in outer space. Have you, have you seen it or heard of it? I've not heard of that one. I believe it's called Fifth Avenue. And it's, it's what's that, that British dude that you, they used to play, um, they used to play House. You remember that, that, that doctor show called House? Yeah, yeah. It's that guy is the lead is the lead actor in there. There's a few other people in there, but it's I, I don't know much about it. I know it's it's a comedy, it's set in outer space. It looks like it's pretty funny. And I've been sort of holding off on it because I wanted to wait till the season was over so I can binge it. So I think I'm gonna go check it out now since it's over, since the season's mm -hmm. over. So I'm gonna tell you a show Fifth Avenue. I'm gonna tell you a show y'all might have missed that was good called Into the Badlands. Like they didn't oh, yeah. that was didn't, pretty good. Oh, you you seen it? I saw the first. I saw the first season. Okay, okay. Um, like I said, uh, For Life is a decent show, and I promise y'all, I'm gonna get back to reviewing that because that had a lot of traction with my subscribers. They was enjoying the reviews I done of For Life, and I'm gonna get back into. I just gotta catch up. I just gotta catch back up on it. Okay. Um, I quit doing it because I got banned from YouTube since November. I've been banned from YouTube three times. For stuff for stuff that happened in 2015 and 16. That's and I think I've gotten 
it's, it's ridiculous, man. And I think I've gotten everything together. But every time YouTube puts you on a band and you can't make content, it drives down your SEO. And yeah. before they kicked me off the first time, Power was taking my channel to all-time highs. Okay? Yeah. I get off and I can get back on around February. And I start getting traction again. And in two weeks, they said, nope, you're off again for a whole nother month and now I'm back. So it's yeah. kind of like every time they do that, it's almost like starting over. Especially for a channel like mine that does so many different things. I don't just do movie reviews. I do tech a little bit. Um, right. I'm starting to get into the celebrity stuff reluctantly. I mean, and I say that very <laughs> reluctantly, but it drives traffic and people like to hear opinions on what celebrities are doing. Um, so I'm kind of doing that a little bit too. And I'm still right. holding on to doing finance, finances and politics because that stuff is near and dear to my heart. Right. You no. Know? So I'm holding on to that too. So tell, I mean, we talk, we've talked a little bit this about this offline. I'm not sure if you want to talk about it online, but but you've had some offers from people to do certain things for for to review things, not not so much review them, but more so just talk about them on your channel that you've had to turn down. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about what you think about some of this and and, and you know what that means to you financially, especially with the way YouTube has been doing you wrong lately. And, and, it, and where do you think is a place for people to find some of that content? I don't even want to say the words. It has to do with TV stuff, but I don't want to even, you know, I don't want YouTube tripping, but <laughs> it seems like anytime that somebody wants to review a live TV service, YouTube seems to want to come down on them, at least black folks. Cause I see white folks out there doing it all the time. And, and, and yeah, safe and going, but it, it, yeah, and I don't understand how that's happening. Um, I, I don't understand that, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, you know, YouTube has really come down on people that are doing anything with IPTV, um, streaming content that they don't deem is legal, right? right? So, I guess that term just comes down to how you define legal. And for us YouTubers, it don't matter. It's up to YouTube to decide it. So if you do something that they deem is wrong, you're just up the creek. And right. trying to get somebody on a phone with YouTube is like trying to carry water in a bucket that don't have a bottom. You can forget right. it. You're going right on through. You're going to be frustrated. Yeah. And so people have, you know, in the past when I used to do that type of content, people would make me offers one guy paid me to do reviews of his service. He paid me $5,000 a month. Jeez. Then I had another guy who was paying $1,000 every two weeks because my channel was driving traffic to them so heavy and they didn't mind talking to me about the business side because they knew I was like, you just tell, you just give me a set for you what I want. That's all I need. Right. And, and I even done some free services for some people because I rock with them. You know, I'm a... Hey, I'm a benevolent brother. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I, yeah, yeah. You know, I looked out for the cookout. Right. But um, I can't do it anymore, y'all. Like YouTube, I'm on my number two community guideline strike. If I get one Ooh. more before my first strike disappears, channel's gone. Now, yeah. I do have my other little channel, but I'm kind of saving that one. For those of you that think I'm going to be spoiling baby ale, I'm going to be putting her content on the little channel so right. that y'all see I'm not spoiling her. But you will. <laughs> I'm going to put on my Power Rangers helmet and scare her. Thank you, James. She's going to think it's cute. That's what it is. She's going to be, she's going to be a, a female black nerd. Man, Larry, I don't know no one-year-old that would see this when they halfway sleep and think that that's cute. That is true. They, they might be a little freaked out by it. That chick is going to be like, where's my daddy? <laughs> <laughs> I will say this, though. <clears throat> I will say this, that it is it is difficult at times when you're trying to produce good content and show people how to get, you know, live TV, free movies and stuff elsewhere, because you want to show what you can. But sometimes YouTube just like for me, when I post stuff, if I just put the word free in the title, it automatically 
until it gets flagged for like it for a review. Like it won't like it used to be YouTube changed their 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 review process a bit where it used to be that if they if they flagged it and it wasn't monetized, you would have to submit uh you have to put fill out, you used to have to fill out a little form. Then they simplified the form to where you just have to put a checkbox to say you want it reviewed. Now it just shows up automatically that it's uh that it's under review. So they'll just automatically flag it. They'll de they won't have it monetized and it'll automatically get reviewed. And then maybe it's okay, maybe it's not. But by just putting the word free in there, my stuff gets flagged. So oftentimes what I'll do is if I have cord cutting stuff. I'll post it like a week or so early so that I can see if it's going to get flagged. And if it does, I'll wait for the review to come back. And if it's still come, if it comes back where they're not going to monetize it, I'll pull the video down and just re-upload it with a different title and see if that works. Are you and, serious? You yeah, so, so, with, so with all the legit services you talk about, I mean, all you ever all talk about is legit stuff now. Legit stuff. They still flag you. Even though it's a legit service, just because you put free in it, just because I put free in there, and I don't use any of those other keywords. I don't use anything like like IPTV. I don't talk about Cody or anything. I mean, in fact, people, you know, people ask me, "Hey, do you do this? Do you do tell stuff?" You know, you'll never see it on this channel. I just don't do it. And and sometimes people like to try and be funny and drop stuff in the comments, say, "Oh, you can get this app here," and they'll leave a link. You can get this service here. And I usually I'll delete this, I'll delete the links and I'll tell the people, look, you can't post that stuff in the comments because YouTube will get to tripping. And if you continue to post it, because I've had some people that have been just sort of dicks and they keep posting, I tell them I just have to ban you from the channel. You know, I don't want to, but so, it's just like I'm not losing my channel because you want to be a jerk and post links that I've told you not to post in the comments. So oh you know, man, yeah, you, you deal with that. So a lot of uh, people are up here saying that there needs to be another platform. Now, I don't know if y'all know, I do have a podcast. So anytime you watch my videos, always check the video description link, or you can check the top comment. I always pin a post up there that links you to the podcast. Sometimes I put stuff up there that I know can't be on YouTube. And sometimes I just transfer my YouTube videos over there, just audio version. So that if something ever happens, I've got a backup for y'all to still find me. And then y'all can always find me on Instagram, Life Games. And I've got a Facebook page. Larry, you still got your page too, right? Yeah, I still have my Instagram, my Twitter, my uh, my Tumblr page, my Facebook page is still going there. You know, I don't, I'm. It's unclear to me if Facebook has the same restrictions that YouTube does when it comes to posting content, because I see people that post all kinds of stuff over there. But I've been a little hesitant to post some of this stuff over there and then lose my channel or lose my page. So I don't, you know, I've been hesitant about doing that, but I've been thinking about it because I have, you know, I, I do have some really great sources for content, but part of me is just like, I don't really want to take the chance, but on, on Facebook, on Facebook or anywhere, really part of me is the only place I feel like it may be safe to post is if, you know, if I get my website up and going, I has been down for a long time because it got hacked a while back. And then and then GoDaddy screwed up my server and it was it's been trouble getting it back up and running. So I just haven't really dealt with it. But part of me is like the only safe place to put it is is on my own site. Or from my understanding, if you have like a uh, if you have like a, uh, a Patreon, you can put whatever videos you want up on Patreon that they don't really care. No, they so don't care. I've got Patreon, too. Um, but the, the issue with all of what we just said, ladies and gentlemen, is all the platforms we just mentioned where we could put unfiltered content has to be paid it's, yeah. it's except for patreon patreon you can put whatever you want to put up there but unless subscribers go and donate to those pages you don't make any money and not gonna, you're not gonna see it you're not gonna see it and the same thing with a podcast too um yeah. except for the podcast is a little different you do have to pay for your storage but they do have it now where if you get enough downloads or enough um listens they do have different platforms that will monetize still not to the degree of youtube so right and i don't know if anybody's going to ever be able to come into the game and make a platform like youtube and and do it the way youtube used to be because now youtube has shed a light on the kind of content that people can put out 
that eventually even another platform, when they get big enough, the government going to slap them on the hand, too, and say, you know what? We don't want you saying X, Y and Z, this, that and the third. Right. And I don't know how someone would privatize a platform where anyone can post whatever they want to post and they don't fall under somebody's restriction unless yeah. it's a podcast or something to that, that effect. Cause I've thought about like, what would it take for someone to make their own counter to YouTube? Like, do I have the funds to do that? All I know is the bandwidth you would need to have in servers. If you start getting enough people posting each and every day, I can only imagine what them servers cost. Yeah, it would be astronomical. I mean, I, I think that I think that for in some respects, if if um, if Instagram monetized allowed people to monetize their IGTV content, I think a lot of people might go to IGTV because there's a lot of kids on Instagram, and there's a lot of people that go to Instagram too. There's you know you see some of those short clips, but I don't feel like a lot of people are on. IGTV, I feel like some people go there, but a lot of people are like they want to get paid. And if you're making content, you're making money. You know, you don't want to just post your content on someone's platform so they can make money. You want to post content. You want to post your content so that you can make money. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I don't and care. Yeah. I don't care if I share if I share the revenue with somebody, but I need to get a piece of it. I don't want to post. I'm not posting it up there just so I can get so I can get some some Instagram fame. I want I want a piece of that pie. <laughs> let no. me shout out. Let me shout out my homegirl Muchella. She's back. She's saying hey, Lamont and Larry. She really loves our show, and she missed us the other day. And for everybody that's here now, Larry, are you able to come back on Friday? Or are you going to do something with the missus? No, Friday. I sh Friday. I should. What time do you think about Friday night? You think again? Yeah, nine o'clock. Yeah, Friday night should be good, man. I mean, we're not really going out anywhere nowadays, so, you know. So we'll y'all just going to have to deal with us, our silliness, and we might even take phone calls, live on the wild side. Let y'all yeah, let y'all run the show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we let y'all come up with topics, and we let y'all run the show. If you want us to come back on Friday night, take your calls and let y'all run the show, somebody give me a hell yeah. Uh oh, my computer's about to die. Why is my stuff not charging? There we hey, go. Man, it's all good. We need to go anyway, man. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dad now, man. I can't be up all night anyway. We need to go. We need I to have go. my thing plugged in. It wasn't saying it's charging, but it wasn't charging up. I don't know. Well, it says it's charging. Hopefully, it's working. Okay, so we Larry, we got a bunch of hell yes to call in and let the subscribers run the show Friday night at nine o'clock. I like that. All right, let them call in, and um, I'll have to uh, I'll have to see if I can if I can uh, put out a post. I posted up on Facebook tonight that I was going to be on that I was on with you, and posted a link to the uh, to the feed. So uh, maybe we'll have to get the link a little bit early. I'll I'll post them. Um, I think you can set it up earlier, right? And then and then once you're ready to go, yeah, you can do that. And another thing that um, a lot of people follow like you know you can make posts on your facebook page mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to post our picture and i'm going to post some content that we might talk about friday night to get everybody to understand the flow of the show and let them know we're going to take their calls and let them call in and they can talk about any subject and we'll let everybody respond to it and i'll start promoting it tomorrow and i promote yeah, I like it friday that. during the day i like that and i'll and i'll and i'll send a link out to my folks and let them know that we'll be on so that uh, so we can get in there and get some more people in here and get some calls, talk some smack, and yeah. you guys, whatever shows you're watching, get ready with them because we're gonna we're gonna ask what shows you're watching because everyone's shut in, so we want to have some good content, you know. So we do. Yeah, there there we, it is. We do. And with, having said that, I'm gonna let the living legend Larry go. Um, you know, <laughs> like I said, me being a dad, I have to practice what I preach. And if I tell my child she's going to have her butt in that bed eight o'clock, I need to be in bed by 10. <laughs> well, there you go, man. There, there it you is. go. Larry, give us your famous outro. Um, good night to everybody. Priscilla, I ain't fooling with you no more talking that Tampa Bay Bucks mess and Tom Brady. I ain't fooling with you no more, Priscilla. I love you, <laughs> but I ain't fooling with you.
<laughs> anyway, Larry, get us on out of here, man. She about to run my blood pressure up. Oh man, here you go. See, just go find her and cough on her. Put some put some Rona juice on her. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's just wrong. That's nope. so wrong. All right, you guys. It's been fun. And um hit us up on Friday. We'll be back talking some more craziness, enjoying the time, trying mm. to make the uh, you know, trying to make everybody shut in a little bit easier, a little bit funner. A little bit. Now, I said it, I said it funner. <laughs> so and uh, you know, if you want to join me, if you guys have your home delivery services, make sure you get some corona jumping off. So uh, so we can all share a, share a cold one, if that's if you drink. If you don't drink, don't get it, because I don't want anybody uh, messing up their sobriety on my behalf. So I got one yeah. question before we go. Uh huh. Tim, if you are available Friday night, we would love to send you a link to your computer so you can be the third wheel on this show for a little while. We want, that's right. we want to audition you, Mr. Tim. You can be the <laughs> moderator. You can be... You, you're not going to come to this show and be Molly Clarum on ESPN First Take. You're going to come up here and be Tim Windsor, the one that go. we know and love. So there if you, you want to join this show, hit me on Instagram, DM me. Everybody, any subjects y'all want us to cover Friday night, hit me on the ground with a DM. We'll try to get to it. Now, Larry, get us on out of here. All right, everyone. It's been real. And stay safe, stay healthy, stay at a distance. And until next time. Love, peace, and air grease. Peace. Yeah, man.